want to welcome everyone, very especially to the fellowship of uh, this Sunday, the fellowship of the Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. What we're talking about is what we have been announcing over the period, but we have not had time to take on it. We are talking about Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper. And um, I want to bring us some preliminary uh, teaching on that in preparation for the communion service. Part of the communion service will be during the Easter period. Then after that demonstration service, communion service with a, a selected people, then it will now go on to the various locations. Now, for I tell you a number of reasons we are making this uh, preparatory teaching. As is usual with us, we need to all uh, join our music uh, ministers in order to go to some preparatory firing songs. But before then, let us bow down heads to pray. Eternal Father in glory, we praise your name, name of the Lord, which is a strong tower, turned into it, and he is safe. But I thank you because of the word that we are about to bring our way by the spirit of the living God. And the prayer I make is that every person is paying attention this day to be illuminated. Everything will go well. At the end of the day, turn a rock of ages, nobody will say I didn't understand. And having granted everybody understanding, now we go forward, each and every one of us, to prepare for the communion service. Thank you very much, Lord, be heaven, because we know that you've answered. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. I hear the people say amen everywhere. Amen. amen. Now let's go to join our music ministers as we take some songs. First one is saying, fill my cup, Lord. Just listen to what they are singing. It is not found in our songbook. The songs that are going to follow this are found in our songbook. The second song, which is the first from our songbook, is the Bible stands. Song number 44. The third in the series, which is the second from our songbook, is Faith of Our Fathers. Song number 173. And then the fourth, which is the third from our songbook is titled, Jesus is our message, song number 26. Let's rise up to sing. First of all, to listen to Fill My Cup, Lord, and join in the weddings of the music ministry. Thank you. 
of men. His truth by none ever was refuted, and destroy it never can. The Bible stands and it will forever when the world has passed away. By inspiration it has been given. All his precepts I will obey. The Bible stands every test we give it for its author is divine. By grace alone I expect to live it and to prove it and make it mine. The Bible stands, though the hills uh, tumble, it will firmly stand when the earth shall crumble. I'll plant my feet on its firm foundation. The Bible stands. Song number 44. Oh, 
its firm foundation for the bar who stands. The Sweet would be the cheer. 
you to lift up your heart unto the Lord in prayer, in readiness for the word of life, as he will bring to us by his spirit. Open your heart everywhere and pray to God. It is proper that we should uh, pray to the Lord at all times. Lord Jesus Christ said, men ought always to pray and not to be discouraged to faint. We are bringing about the bringing about us the word of God on holy communion as we believe and as we uh, crave to have or participate in over these years because of some circumstances beyond our control. This is a time 
but uh, is uh, very crucial. And then it's necessary that we should understand what the Lord is saying to us at this point in time. Precious Lord, once more, thank you. Thank you for such a time like this. Thank you for the clarifications that you're going to bring about the hands of the sons of men, the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. We are magnified because we have known the end from the beginning, from the very word go, from 1975, when the man gave his life to Christ, then a rock of ages. Who told 79, a few years after, when thou didst say unto him, and I will bring you into that for which I have called you, and thou without measure. You've known 2024, from 1975 and from 1979, and from the time that I was in my mother's womb, between October 1943 and July 1944. Thou glorified, precious Lord, has granted clarification to the hearts of the sons of men who are associated with the Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Thank you for answer to prayers. In Jesus' name we are prayed. And amen. Now, before we go read the scriptures on this topic, in preparation for Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper. Here is uh, uh, this remark that everybody needs to take note of. Everybody, either and the left. Men and women, the people that are coming not quite long ago and the people that have been there. This teaching, this preparatory teaching does not have anything to do with uh, the campaign of somebody campaigning against uh, the watchman saying that we don't take communion, we don't believe in communion. It doesn't have anything to do with that at all. The reason I said that is as follows. From the word go, the Ministry of the Watchman started uh, officially sometime in 1982, after I had become born again by 1975. 1982, and then the formative years of 1982 were going on and going on, going from place to place, now pursuing the people. And then a few years after, we began our what we can call documented uh, uh, beginnings. The first uh, uh, December retreat we had was at Comprehensive Secondary School, our mom. And that was in 1986. And now, in 1987, we had a December meeting 1987, the title of the team was Revelation and Restoration for All. That was 1987. And uh, this is the outline of that 1987 December retreat. And in that outline, we taught on the Lord's Supper. I do not know how you can teach on the Lord's Supper or teach on anything when you don't believe in it or when you don't want to practice it. I don't know how somebody can be teaching on repentance and, and, and uh, restitution and uh, baptism with the Holy Spirit and sanctification when the person doesn't believe it and when the person doesn't want to practice it. So, this is it. December 1987, and uh, we taught on the Lord's Supper. The title of that Bible study is as follows, or was, take it, this is my body. 
And we went down memory lane. We drew our facts and our points from what happened when the people were in Egypt and at the point of departure from Egypt, when they took out the lambs, spotless lambs, and killed the lambs and used the blood to pass on the, on the side posts of the doors and on the lintel. And then the Lord passed over. And then God gave them a commandment concerning the Passover, even in those days. And then later on, it was that Passover that Jesus Christ was celebrating in the day that instituted the Holy Communion issue. So, that was how it went at that time. Then, in 1988, remember I said 1987, the first teaching on that. 1988, and this is the outline of 1988, December meeting at the same venue, Comprehensive Secondary School, our mama in Imo State. And then, part of the Bible study and outline of the Bible study that we had is the Lord's Supper. And here is what was briefly taught. That the Lord's Supper was instituted by Jesus Christ so that all believers, all members of the family of God might partake thereof regularly to show the Lord's death till he come. The emblems used are unleavened bread and the juice of the fruit of the vine. Anyone who eats and drinks unworthily brings damnation, punishment, and chastisement upon himself or herself. That was the outline of what was taught. Then, following this, in 1996, December meeting 1996, then, that meeting had two sessions, first session and second session. And then it was more elaborate what was done. Because in this meeting, we had what we call our articles of faith. Articles of our faith. Articles of faith mean what you believe, what you are standing on. And so, it is very clear that uh, there are no questions as to whether the watchman believes uh, in Holy Communion or the, celebrating the Lord's Supper. Unfortunately, anyway, circumstances that we could not uh, handle went against us over these years. So, we are now set to celebrate or to partake of the Lord's Supper according to his demands. And I say once more, it is not as a result of somebody's uh, campaign or calumny. It's not the result of that at all. It is just the fact that the watchman believes what we want to partake of now. And um, and the people that may have been uh, influenced are those people that I'm going to describe now. People that come around or that I may have been influenced one way or another negatively and um, shrug their shoulders and then did something uh, not too good. Uh, the people that I'm going to explain now. Turn with me. To ask of Apostle chapter 17, from verse 1. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was the synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. And three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, 
And that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ, the anointed one, the coming one, the Messiah. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. The Jews which believed not moved with envy, took unto them some lewd, that is, gangsters, fellows of the better sort of the marketplace, and gathered a company, even a crowd. And set all the city in an uproar and assaulted that this attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also, whom Jason hath received, accommodated. And these all do contrary to the uh, decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they had these things. And when they had taken security of Jesse and of the others, they let them go. Then Paul at Berea and uh, Athens. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who, coming thither, went into the synagogue of the Jews on Dita. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and cite the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached with Paul at Berea, they came thither also and started off the people. And then immediately the brethren sent the word Paul to go as it were to the sea, the Silas and Timotheus above their still. And there that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens, and receiving a commandment on the Silas and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed, they departed. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, the spirit was tired in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons. And in the market they lived with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? Others, some, he seemed to be a set up forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, this is uh, a place of concourse, a great place in that place, saying, May we know what this. Uh, New doctrine, whereof thou speakest is, thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know therefore what these things mean. For all the Athenians take note of that verse 21, and strangers which were there spend their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Verse 21 again, for all the Athenians and the strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Now I said that uh, there are people who are like these Athenians, the one to belong to a new ministry recently formed. The one to identify with something that is new. They want to be more relevant. They want to be, uh, to be called the founders or the, uh, the elders of a ministry. And that is what is driving many people. And as a result of that, they open their ears to every manner of thing that is flying around. And these are the people that... Uh, they will not listen to the things that, that they are being told. And because they seem tired, they want to hear new things. They want to belong to a new ministry. They want to be assistant general, overseer, assistant general, woman's co uh, coordinator, and things like that. 
These are the things that have happened over the period. But we give you to understand that uh, this place called the Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement is like a prick. Nobody can go against it and get away with it. You can ask the big uh, conglomerate of uh, religious error what has happened over the years. They fought it, but uh, today the fighting is, uh, is, uh, has yielded no dividend. Ministry has started and then, and then went through the thick and thin, and then the Lord stood by us, and then there, there you are. So, it is the, one of the doctrines and the, what we can call cardinal doctrines of the Bible, which is believed by the watchman, Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. So, we are getting prepared to serve the Holy Communion. Uh, by the time we come to do it, we're going to have a little Bible study that will take us back to history, take us back to what happened in the land of Egypt. We'll look at some uh, uh, types, some foreshadowing of a thing. You remember that when they were to leave the land of Egypt, uh, what this thing, the ritual that uh, took place, that is, uh, the families will bring uh, a goat or a sheep, and then without blemish, and it will be killed, and then the blood will be put on the lintel and the cypress of the door. And that night, the angel of the Lord passed through Egypt and then spared all the houses where the blood was seen. And they were told to roast that lamb and eat everything about it and eat in haste. Now we are going to show the significance of that and how it agrees with uh, the lamb of God, even Jesus Christ, and why he said, take it, this is my body. And take a drink. This is my blood. For the time being, we want to show that that thing that he said, we are set now to practice and to continue to practice. Come with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, from verse 1. Matthew. Chapter 26, and from verse 1. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these things, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the peace, feast of the Passover. We're going to talk about that. The thing that happened in Exodus chapter 12. And the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. And now, verse 16, and from that time he sought opportunity to betray him, that is Judas. Verse 17, now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, a period that uh, preceded the Passover proper. The disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where will thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, go into the city to such a man and say unto him, the master said, my time is at hand, I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them and they made ready the Passover. Verse 20. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, but one of you shall betray me. And they were receding sorrowful, and uh, began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? Now, verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it. And gave to his disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. 
And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Now go to join what we have read to what is stated concerning this issue, this ritual, in Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. And we're reading from verse 17. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this, divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Now let's read from verse uh, uh, 15. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And after that, now verse 19 says, and he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. This do in remembrance of me. In the course of time, when we come to the table proper, we will show what we are remembering before we partake of the Lord's Supper. Now, when the Apostle Paul was ministering, there was an occasion where the people abused uh, what the ritual. And then he came hard upon them. And here we read the account. The account is in First Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's go to verse 17. Now, is this that? Now, in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. The people came and abused the ritual. Verse 18, for first of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you. I partly believe thee, but there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. That is, the people that are not all together, part of you, the false brethren. Verse 20. When you come together therefore in one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. This is not how it should go. Verse 21, for in eating everyone, take it before other his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. Confusion. What? Have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? It's obvious that these people came together and everybody brought uh, from his abundance and then some people are shopping and then they are rejoicing and they are, they are even shaming other people that didn't have anything and they called it the Lord's Supper. And this man said, this is an abomination. This is not the Lord's Supper. And then he began to ask them in verse 22, what? Have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God? And uh, shame them that have not, because you came to display your wealth and wealth of what you can eat, what you have. Why shall I say unto you, shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Now, he rehearsed a word was given, handed down by the Lord Jesus Christ unto the church. Verse 23 says, For I have received of the Lord that which I delivered, I also delivered unto you. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, 
took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Verse 25, after the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had stopped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. They do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show, you do remember, you do rehearse, you do celebrate the Lord's death till he come. Now look at verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, let a woman examine herself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself or herself. Not discerning. Not discerning. Not discerning. Not realizing. Discernment simply means realizing with a mind's eye. Not realizing that uh, that which the person is partaking, partaking of is a symbol, something that symbolizes the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. Now, in some quarters, religious quarters, what they take is once uh, the host of the bread and wine have been consecrated, now, the bread becomes transformed, metamorphosis, into the body proper, divinity of Jesus, false. And the wine now metamorphoses and becomes the blood of Jesus. That's not true. The reason you know that it's not true is as follows. Let's go back to... Matthew chapter 26, where this ritual was established. Matthew chapter 26, reading from verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for remission of sins. Verse 29, But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth from today of this fruit of the vine. The thing that he called, he said, This is my blood. The same thing he turned around to call the fruit of the vine because that is what it was. It was the fruit of vine, but now it was a symbol. It was now a representation of the blood of Jesus Christ. He symbolized his blood, even the wine. And then the bread symbolized his body. A symbol of his body, not his body proper. Now, by the time we come for the celebration, we go back to the Old Testament to see where this ritual was taken from. Remember, I said they were to leave Egypt and God commanded the lamb to be slain and the blood of that lamb smeared on the side posts of the door and on the lintel. And the angel came through the night and spared the people. And then they were asked to continue with that ritual for perpetual generations. And they were doing it until the coming of Jesus Christ, which, and he was involved in his death in that ritual. Now, they were told to eat the roasted flesh of that lamb themselves. 
Of course, because the flesh of goat, the flesh of sheep could be eaten. And so but when the Lord Jesus Christ wanted to fulfill this ordinance, now he knew that he couldn't have caught his flesh and given to the people to eat and then used a syringe to draw his blood and then put him in cups and given to the people to drink. So he took emblems representing his body, bread and wine to represent his body. Something that was now edible. That is how you will know. And so then, we are coming to that ordinance that has been ordained and commanded over the years. Like I said before, some circumstances, many people may not know what circumstances that I'm talking about. In 1996, and it was taught us that we are there at that time. How that the Lord said we were facing a stiff opposition. Sure. Watchman, Catholic, Charismatic, Renewal Movement, because of the nature of the ministry, faced the stiffest of opposition in the present, the contemporarily speaking, the stiffest of opposition. But now, I thank God that uh, we have come, weathered through the opposition, and then God has given us the stiffest of, uh, the stiffest of uh, 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 defense. That's what made us to stay, to last long. I praise him for that. Now, the time has now come that we want to now go into this thing proper and continue to do that. But there is an an aspect of this uh, preparation that we must highlight, and that is as follows. Let's read from First Corinthians again, reading from chapter 11 and verse 22. What? Have you no houses to eat and to drink in? Eh? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say unto you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And this is what we want to do from this Easter and then the week after Easter for some other people. After the same manner, verse 25, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Listen to me attentively. Esau is coming, and a theme of what we have for the people in the watchman is it is time to switch camps. It is time to switch camps. There is something that I've been complaining about in the recent past. Some of the people that come near me will hear my bitter complaint. And what is it? The fact that people will hear what the Lord is saying. They know that the person that is talking He's not talking his mind. He's talking the mind of God. But I don't understand why the people should leave that thing which the Lord is saying and have time for some other, some other, some other news. Have time for some other things. Listen to me. I did not say that watchman is the only Christian body in the world. That's not what I said. But I'm saying to you that 
The ministry of the watchman is different from the ministry that you have. I didn't say that those ministries are not of God. I didn't say God didn't call them. It's not what I said. I said there is a difference. Somebody has been called by uh, somebody that has a large farm. And then he has grouped the people. And he has said, so, so group, you are, uh, you are growing pineapple. So, so group, you are growing rabbits. So, so group, you are growing vegetables. So, so group, you are growing potatoes. So, so group, you are growing this and that. And then somebody that belongs to the group that's growing rabbits will now leave the instructions and leave the things at the two ledges. And all the things that are being said there, he will, he will shroud himself with the things that are being said by the people that are growing tomato. What a poor soul the person is. That's what I've been lamenting. What a poor soul the person is. In the recent past, ask the Dyson pastors what I charged them with. And I've said it to a number of people. And what is it? When you hear what the Lord is saying to us, it happens to have come from the person that you're listening to. If you were me, if anyone were me, and I come to know that the Lord is leading you, and I come to know that you are of God, and then I come to know that the Lord is the one that gave the information, I will click for the information. And anybody that wants to turn my mind from the information sees it to be my friend. And he is not my enemy, but he will not be my friend. There are people that do not know that in church you should choose your friend. There are people that do not know that. They think that uh, everybody, everybody, whatsoever what they believe, whatsoever their lifestyle, whatsoever the mindset they have, now you must listen to them. Then if you do that, you do not know Christianity. You don't know what it means. Christianity makes you avoid some people, some false brethren. Some people that will take you away from what God would want you to know. You know, avoid them. You heard what the Lord says. Go and take advantage of them because I do. I do. I gave a testimony to that effect. That during the two meetings that we had, they were, they were one followed the other. A gap of only about one week. The December meeting that we had, December 2023. And then the January minister conference that we had, early January. Now, just one week plus, God. And then all the shouting, all the praying, all the hard talk, now brought a lot of head challenges to me. I testified. And I'm not ashamed to testify. I've been telling the Lord, thank you for what you did. To a point that I was not only dehydrated, but blisters were there, even in my intestine. Through to the lower part of the intestine. And a problem that God had been helping me to handle since 1961, I became bloated. And it would appear the lower part of the intestine was a stone. Complete stone. And it was scary. But I was, I went to the Lord in prayer. And I said, two kingdoms are at work. And I belong to the, this kingdom that is more powerful than this kingdom. I belong to the kingdom. The spirit of God is an intelligible being. And these other spirits are under him. No of these spirits, no, none of these demons can compare to the spirit that is operating in the kingdom to which I belong. And that spirit is inside me. And that spirit is a mechanical engineer. That spirit is a biologist. 
That spirit is a philosopher. That spirit is a physician. That spirit is a cardiologist. And he, now he's inside me. He knows where to touch. All I did was to go and then begin to ask the Lord, the shouting. Did I shout to be known? Was it not in praise to thee? The king is coming in his glory and majesty. Everybody saw the, saw the strength. I went back to it, asking him, what evil did I do? In the things that I said, that I should have this development in my system. And now I went back to the outline. Outline earlier, outline that talks about the unfailing agents of uh, the fulfillment of God's mind, the spirit of God, and the word of God. And I said, the spirit of God is inside me, and the word of God is in my mouth, and it's in my hand. So I'm going to speak the word, and the spirit that is inside me is going to take the word and accomplish things in my body. Guess what, my friend? Guess what? The man preached it. Guess what? Everything shrank. Right now, I'm amazed. Some people, when they hear it, they say, I will be like Jesus. I will just be like Jesus. You don't do anything. You didn't take advantage of what you had. You didn't go back to the message. You didn't listen to it. You didn't pray it. You didn't go to the Bible. So that's what I was challenging them on. And I said to you, if you go to the things that the Lord is saying to us, listen to me, you will not regret. There are very many people these days of cacophony of voices. They want to open the phone, the internet, YouTube, and there is a lot. And they will show the soft, soft thing. The soft cells. They will show the soft cells. Everybody today is a pastor. Everybody is a mentor. You cannot be a mentor until you have been mentored. Hear that. You cannot be a teacher. You are not supposed to be a teacher until you have submitted to teaching. You cannot be a corrector, correct somebody until you have been corrected. You cannot be a rebuker until you have endured rebuking. And then you are told, stop there. Stop and you stop. Some people come to church. Message has finished. And then they are going. And then an announcement came up. Every one of you, wherever you are, stand and hear this information. And they are still going. And I said to all that they are Christians, they are fake brethren. I said they are fake. I don't understand. Sometimes somebody needs to come and teach me something. You know what I want? Somebody needs to come and, come and prove to me that the things that the Lord applauded of old, he gave a pass mark that made people to survive. That today, those things don't matter. Somebody needs to prove to me that. And what he demanded of old, listen to me. For instance, I used to argue before the Lord, and I argued, and I said, I sowed peace in the church, and peace is what I merit. No quarreling, no fighting, no opposition, loyalty. We will suffer some, as a result of some things, you will suffer some, 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 some something, not because you committed sin, but because of some misunderstanding, and you bore it. Because if you open your mouth and begin to complain, there will be commotion. And this is the way the man went. And I said, Lord, what I merit is peace. Anybody that brings crisis in the watchman is not my child. I didn't criticize any leader. 
I didn't go against and oppose any person. I didn't go to tell, did you see, did you see, did you see how he's talking? Do you see the preaching he preaches against me? And then somebody will go and do that and make, and make, uh, and make, and make friends. And then those people will believe the person and there will be gangs, even gang, gangs in church. And there will be clusters of people. This one and this one and tying it together and they're saying nonsensical things. See, I know the truth. I said I went to Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Now, but sometimes when we say some people think that it's a boost, I sowed peace from 1975, and that is what I merit. So then, what is the point? The point is that I, too, listen to me attentively, listen to the thing that the Lord says, and go back to them. Now, we are preparing for communion. You need to ask yourself, am I in the camp of... Uh, Trouble, trouble shooters, trouble makers. Am I in the camp of criticizers? Am I in the camp of fault finders? Am I in the camp of feuding people? Feuding. F E U D I N G. Feuding people. If you are in the camp of feuders, people that are feuding, you need to move and go to the camp of friendship. Because the church that Jesus Christ is coming for is a, a church of friendship, a church of friends. Listen to me attentively. A church of people that are saying, come Lord Jesus. A church of people that are saying, come Lord Jesus. And how could they be saying, come Lord Jesus? Because they are friends. Because they hold their hands together, they are friends. Not a church of people, enemy one to another. So, it's time to shift cap. That is the message that is coming this is That is the title. Time to move from feuding camps to friendship camps. Time to move from stubbornness. There are those that, that are in the camp of stubborn people. But they, they must do their minds. They are never bendable. They are unmalleable. You know what? There are different kinds of steel, iron. There is cast iron. And cast iron is not malleable because of what is made of the metal. That the thing is, is a composite something. But there is something that is called mild steel. And then you see the rocks which we use in floors, building. They are made of mild steel. So you can bend into a U shape. You can bend it into an S shape. You can bend it into a T shape. They are mild steel. You bend it and it will not break. But cast iron, you don't do that. There are people that are in the church and they, are, they have their mind, they have their mind, they want to do their minds. Please, in this evil day, think about every day what you are depositing. Every day, what kind of Christianity are you playing? Because we're in the last day. And then there are very many people, it doesn't matter, they gang up and they are friends, and then they gather this one, gather this one, gather this one. People are talking and people are teaching. The internet and the, the platform, social platforms are filled with followers. Uh, filled with people, and they all have followers. Good. They all have followers. Somebody know, that knows uh, John chapter 3 verse 16, once he knows that he become, uh, becomes a minister, very many people, they are, they are, they are, they are pastors, they are um, this and that, they are apostles, senior apostles, senior evangelists, things like that. My friend, my friend, 
Bible talks about there that will be used to teach other people. He said those people will have been taught so that there are not novices. And what is, uh, what happens, uh, the possibility with novice is that he will be taken by pride. The devil will corner the person and then he will manifest pride and then will fall down flat. So then, we have heard the word, the preparatory, the word that we are talking about. You want to get yourself prepared for the oncoming celebration of the, of the Lord's Supper. And then he says, think, are you feuding with wife, with children, with siblings, with your parents, the brethren in the church, or are you in friendship? One with another. These are the things that we need to begin to think about until Easter. When we do the first shot with some category of people, and then following that, we now go to do it in the various places. The Lord is coming. And in these last days, what we see operating everywhere is religious spirits. Take note, religious spirits are not violent spirits. Religious spirits will talk religion. Religious spirits are spirits that monitor every person. Listen to me. And somebody is not Following Christianity, it does not bother about following peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And then falling out with this person, falling out with this ministry, this and that. From here, he moved to this place. And there are people that are moved from church to church. They find fault with this one. And they move and go to this one and find fault. They move. They go to this one and find fault. Let me ask you, where is it that you will go to in this world and you will not find some fault? And then he will be moving like that. And the next moment, he is disgusted and goes to begin a ministry. And somebody will join the person. Listen to me, what has happened is that the person's mindset has qualified him to have the religious spirit, and the religious spirit sneaks in, and that's it. The person will not know. And then there are other people that as a result of sin, they get, they get inspired. What we call anointing through sin. Anointing through sin. And they get inspired by those spirits, and then people will follow them. I pray that you should check. Some time ago we said, this is the time to choose which church to attend. This is the time to choose who your pastor should be. Who do you listen to? This is the time to choose what message do I listen to? This person that is talking. What is his background? What is his testimony? What is her testimony? What is the person's testimony? What is the person's history? This is the time to do that. Meanwhile, in order not to stray, what I bring to you is we are coming with the arrangement that is a ritual. The uh, ritual, call it ritual, but not in the wrong sense of the ritual of the, of, the, of the evil people or people that are into cult. I'm talking about ritual in the right sense of it. The communion we are preparing for, you need to shift camp. Remember, we have said God had determined restoration and that restoration will guarantee jubilation. 
And that jubilation will guarantee praise unto God. And all of us were looking for it, particularly in this part of the world, from the political arena. But now, in the day that we began proper, I told you, found out that when the Lord says a thing, he begins it not the way you want it. The restoration, the type that happened to Elijah has been determined. The restoration that happened to the people of old has been determined. And then God is the one that is doing the restoration. But before the restoration can be the lot of anybody, that person must say, here I am in this camp. This camp is not good. This is the camp I switch to. Lord, come to my aid. Let me share at least one camp, deadly camp. What camp? The camp of people that never can see their errors. The camp of uh, Isaiah. And of course, you know that it is natural for man not to see his face, of a woman not to see her face. Take note of that. Can you see your face as you're looking at me? You can't see your face. I see your face because I'm looking at you. If you must see your face, you go to take a reflective instrument that will reflect your face. That is how it is. Naturally, every person is defensive. But now if you want to go to heaven, if you want to have what the Lord did to, to Isaiah to be done, you must be saying, you must say to yourself, oh Lord, I may be wrong. It could be that I am wrong. Lord, it could be that I'm wrong. And you are saying it with all your heart. It could be that I'm wrong. Show me my true self. And you mean what you are saying. I move away from the camp of those that uh, are incorrigible to the camp of those that are saying, correct me. There are those that come to church. And you know what? They come to church. And they uh, say, so we have been born again, and that's all. They don't care about anything. All the, excuse me if I use this, uh, this uh, jargon, all the nyama nyama that is found in the natural person they are carrying. They are carrying the something headlong. Day after day, the thing is manifesting. They have minds that are bent. If you say this, it will read meanings into it. And they must read the wrong meanings into the something. They must coin out some wrong or something from things that happen. They must coin out some wrong meaning into it. That's it. They do not give any person any benefit of doubt. They don't excuse anybody. They are legally minded. Sometime long, long ago, somebody was among us and he was our worker. And then he wrote a longish letter to me and he was talking about Imo and Anambra dichotomy. From him, I had the word that caught on me for the first time. I went to the dictionary, excuse me, I went to the dictionary to look up the word that I caught on. And I was wondering, in a workforce of not up to 100, somebody was talking about Imwa and Anambra that I caught on. What a warped mind. I called him and said, you wrote this thing? He said, yes. I said, my friend, who have... Uh, you have a legal mind. If you carry on with this kind of mind, you are going to run into trouble, and he did. 
And he did. And he did. Want to question everything? Want to clash the people? Some other person came to me because he was reading law and then was saying the social problem that social person have. He was quoting the law, Nigerian law, that will solve it. I said, my friend, this is not, this is not law. This is Christianity. Don't stop you are quoting the law. We want to apply the Nigerian law to brother and brother having some, some misunderstanding, live, living together. And he was quoting law for me. I said, my friend, take your law away. You carry a legal mind, you will not be a Christian. If you carry your engineering mind, your legal mind, you are, you are whatever mind. Now, that is the mind of the learned gentleman, the learned gentlewoman. You carry the mind of, uh, I'm a doctor. You carry the mind of, I'm a professor. You're not on your way to heaven. There have been professors before you. And then the thing blows your, blows your, your, your head, and then you don't listen. Now you say you're going to heaven. Which heaven? I'm, I'm, I'm talking, which heaven? Where are you going to? Now, the Lord Jesus Christ said in that day, now, you see me, I am your Lord and Master. I came from heaven. I am the word of God personified. The word of God personifies sitting side by side with God. See, this is God. This is his word personified originally. And sitting side by side, this is God, this is the word of God personified. This is the Holy Spirit. This person is uh, tangible. This person is tangible. This person, the Spirit of God is not tangible. And now, at a point... Now God said to this person, thou art from this hour my son. And then he reduced him from being second person in the blessed trinity into being his son. And then later on, that word was uh, metamorphosed into child and entered the womb. This was Jesus. Then somebody think about this. And then the creator became a human, a creature, became a human being. And then he was going on like that. And at a point in the devil, he wanted to teach the humility, to teach, you know, this matter of uh, removing, removing your ego. Then he stooped down and removed his outer coat and put on a towel. And carry the basin of water. My friend. My friend. And then went to wash the disciples' feet. One by one. To pin down. And use the water. The, the towel where which he was gathered. And cleaning their feet. And then. There you are. Came to Peter. The, the vociferous man. The bold man. The zealous man. And Peter said, Lord, it can never be that you, who is the Messiah, come from heaven, you should stoop down and wash my feet. Peter was right and wrong. Right and wrong. Right, yes. And master, should he stoop down this low, wash my feet? Wrong, because he didn't understand what this uh, Lord was passing and then he said, if you don't allow it, you have no part in me. Think about that. All the people that have ego, think about it. All the people that are incorrigible, think about it. All the people that are feuding and quarreling and fighting in church, think about it. All the people that are complaining. All the people that are discouraging other people, think about it. All the people that are speaking words that are deadly, think about it. Listen to me. So many people, I was telling some people, say, if you don't understand the ways of the man of God, shut up your mouth. Shut up your mouth. 
lest you put yourself into trouble. If you don't understand. If you don't understand what the Lord is doing or saying, don't talk. Because if you talk and engineer people out of following, you will pay the price. And Peter wanted to engineer the people. And he said, stop it. I, a Lord and Master, has stooped down to do this. To show you how that you need to win yourself of whatever you are in order to help one another. In the present day, every person is a lone ranger. Every person is a lone ranger. Every person... There is something, the idiom in my dialect. There is the yam goes around the stick clockwise. There is another crop. I don't know what it's called in English. That crop goes around the stick anti-clockwise. If you make the mistake of taking the yam tendering, if that is not the name, excuse me. And then you move it from the clockwise position and put it anti-clockwise to come down. In the church today, these people are going clockwise, the other people are going anti-clockwise. Nobody is supporting anybody. So let's pray together when we come Previously, we come and, and face all the problems. The problems were communal problems. But today, the problems are individual problems. And the other people look away. Christianity, I don't agree. And we want to take communion? Think about it. And we want to take communion? Think about it. And we must take communion. So we bring you to this word. Let every person examine himself and switch camp during this Easter. As we talk about the camps, the camps you should switch from. The camps of, uh, camps of, uh, of people that are born in church. And then they are not members of the church. They are physically members of the church. They come when they like. They are not born again, but they are born by pastors, by workers. What an unfortunate circumstance. What an unfortunate circumstance. And they get with their stiff neck and they are going into sin and living according to this world. Let me ask you, let me ask those people that are in this world. Can't you see people falling and dying? Have you ever thought to ask yourself that death is coming? Have you ever thought to ask yourself if I should be lost in eternity, what would I say? If I play pranks and get lost in eternity, what would I say? Would I say I didn't hear true? The question I'm asking some other young people, all the fancy, fancy fortune that you are following and all the women that you are following, they call them celebrities and you are rejoicing and you are ad adoring them and you are fascinated about it. You are to be pitied. You are to be pitied. You are fascinated about vanity, about nonsense. I want you to visit the mortuary so that you will see how the mortuary, the morgue attendants kick those bodies when they pile them up in the, in the hall and then they want to dress one in order to put into the container or whatever. Now they use the leg to kick this one out from the other one. What is this life about? As somebody do not follow the law. And the days are rounding up. I pray you, I plead with you, as we prepare 
to take communion. Whatsoever that needs to be done, do it. I say do it. Whatsoever amendment, do it. Whatsoever repentance, do it. Whatsoever restitution, do it. Whatsoever confession, make it. Whatsoever plea, make it, do it. Wrong. All the days are numbered. Soon and very soon. Soon and very soon. Listen to me attentively. A number of years ago, I was in Germany for IGMC. Think about this. By July, it will be 80. By July, it will be 80. And the Lord said, you continue to preach. We are thinking that you will, you will not anchor the rapture. You are joking. But did you see? The person is going to 80. Let us assume that I will reach 120. Like Moses. And I ask you, 40 more years ahead is with us. 40 more years is with us. Have we not entered 2024? Is the first quarter not signing off? How time flies. Somebody should think. All the people that are in the university and they are doing all the rubbish. Think. All the people that are associated and they are... They are, they are fascinated with what you get. Think. With what you wear. Think. Don't come to the communion service and not recognizing that the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. By Easter, we will show, we show what happened to the lamb. That lamb was symbolizing the lamb of God. What happened to that lamb? How that lamb was killed and was roasted. And Jesus Christ was on the cross of Calvary and roasted with pain. And somebody made an argument. The death of the cross, the most excruciating death. He was nailed to that cross by 12 midday. And piecemeal, piecemeal, minute by minute, it was tortured through 3 p.m. That didn't come immediately. And somebody is kidding with it. Some human being is joking with it. Some youth is joking with it. And saying, I don't care. You will care soon. You will care soon, but it will be late. So I pray at this communion service, I, I, I beckon upon you to come on board. But think through. Let no man come to that communion service without thinking through and without making the necessary amendment. Let no man means, let no woman, let no pastor, let no overseer, let no GS, let no GS children, let no GS wife, let no the same pastor's children, everybody in this washman. Let's come together to the table of the Lord. This Easter, we celebrate and to turn, become children of God, children of the kingdom, people that are special. They are not the same with the other people. Listen to me, man, past man, and I know what I'm talking about. 
I am not the same with the people of my age, my age mess in the village. We are not the same. God does not see us the same. And we are not. And I know it. I, don't, I can't live their lives. So, my friend, these other people that are outside the kingdom, they show us all, the, all their bodies. And you are, you are fascinated. And you are having inferiority complex. I pity you. It should be the other way around. You should be the person that will show that this person is a candidate for hell. He doesn't know. He doesn't have what I have. He doesn't have the spirit of God. She doesn't have her name in the book of life. What I am enjoying, he cannot enjoy. So why do I emulate the person that I am above? That's it. You should be superior and not the other way around. But because of not wanting to follow the law, now these people are now overshadowing and then coming with all that something. What is dress? The question I'm asking the people that are living in this world, what is dress? What is wedding? What is marriage? And we must not rest. Now there are people, they want to, they want to go to pre-wedding photo shoot. Useless, useless human beings that remain in church and decide to spoil what people labor to build. Pray shoot to go to Dubai. And then we must all close shop because we are wedding. It is your day. And the next moment there is rakis, upper, upper court, one to another. Oh, I pray for the Lord of glory, whom I represent. And I'm pained in my heart as I see how the people are departing from the something that we follow. My friend, I did not give my life to Christ at 75 years old. I did not give my life to Jesus at the age of eight. Look at me very well. We were in this war. And I recognize that pride is sin. Listen to me. I recognize that immoral thinking, thinking about women only all the time, was that it was polluting my heart. And now, some other people will, will not want you to know that. We recognize we recognize that fornication is sin. We recognize that masturbation is sin. But today, you find the people living in these things. And then they are, they are feeling good. And when we give our lives to Christ, look at the rule of the game that I kept. Krish. I am enjoining every person that is in this church to keep. I kept the rule of the game. What is the rule of the game? When you become a Christian, the next thing that you need to do is to find all the nasty tendencies. To discover all the nasty tendencies, all the natural tendencies, all the characteristics or the talkativeness, all the offense, offenses that fill your heart, a little thing you are offended, all the stubbornness, you are unrulable. You come and there is commotion. You want to assert yourself. You want to rule other people. There is no humility in you. You recognize that. When you come to a meeting, you are looking for some personal uh, that is your personal interest to persist every other person's interest. Think about that. And then anything that is done that you don't like it, you must talk. 
And some people say, I must talk. I know they fear anybody. I fear nobody. I see. I fear nobody. That's what some people say. I know they fear people. My friend you must fear somebody. You must fear somebody. Because we are not equal. Let me sign off with the illustration I gave to a woman in the recent past. What illustration? When a person came for something recently in this center, I said, lady, how tall are you? What's your height? Listen to me attentively. I round off with this. He said, when I measured, I found that I was six feet. I said, stand up. First, the column. First, the column in front of you. Face it. And do as if you want to embrace it. And the woman went and faced the column. I said, stretch that to your hand. I gave the woman a biro. Take this biro, face the column, and stretch your hand and mark where your hand reached. She went and did that and marked. I said, come out. I left my seat. I went and stood where she stood and stretched my hand with the biro and marked. But where I marked did not reach where she marked. Because she's six feet, but I am five feet two. I don't know even whether I'm up to that now, because as we are aging, we are shrinking. Five feet two and a half or so. And then I came and said, did you see that you are much taller than myself? And if there is anything that is hanging there, I will depend upon you. And I will ask you, lady, and you stretch your hand and give me that thing. If I don't do it, I'm stupid. If I don't do it, I am stupid. I am having ego and pride. Now, I take advantage of what you have, your height. Even you are, you are, you are, what you, you have above me. The same way you take advantage of what I have. Did you get my point? He said yes. I always wear you when I gave my life to Christ. I always wear you. Have you even been born? 50 years of foolishness, as it were, pulling the Lord bumper to bumper. Today we will not breed because people are marrying. If they everything, they want to introduce every rubbish inside the house of God because they are marrying. The Lord is saying, and I'm telling you, time to switch camp. It's time to switch camp. And as you come this Easter, with the mind to switch camp, we show the various camps. And when you switch camp, you are in for restoration and jubilation. We yield praise to God. Let me sign off with that. Stop being the Athenians, a Corinthian. And I don't agree with the Corinthian church. A problematic church. The church that Apostle Paul said, it is very clear that something is altogether wrong with you. For Apostle to say, very clear, something is altogether wrong among you. I don't want to be a member of such a church. It's time for prayer. Before we pray, there is a song that you need to join. The music ministry it is in song number 131. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Pilgrim through this barren land. Listen to me, men and brethren. 
We are all pilgrims in this barren land. And if you do not, if you want to reach where we are going, you must allow that God will guide you by his spirit and by his word. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. Song number 131. We are weak, but thou art mighty. Hold us with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, feed us now and evermore. Bread of heaven, feed us now and evermore. Let's stand to close with this and then pray. or the desire and the quest of them that we make the rapture will be. And at such a time, you find that they are ready. They are aware that there is no hindrance. If uh, you are prepared for an examination very fully and you have covered everything, and you have understood everything that you have been taught. Do not be afraid. 
as the examination is approaching. Now, I want to take the examination so that you can be promoted from one year to the other. You'll be saying, let it come. Let it come. And if you are in a football team, and then you people know what you are onions, and you have trend and trend and trend. Now, and the match is coming. You will, with other people, have the readiness of mind. And we are saying, let the time come so we can showcase our artistry. So that we can showcase our skills. So that we can showcase that this team is stronger than the other team. You'll be saying, let that day come. That is how it will be with them that have uh, switched camps. And they are in the camp of death, uh, waiting for the Lord. Open your mouth and say, Lord, in this Easter, even this time around that we are wanting to get into the communion, precious Father, I pray that you help me. I want to switch camps. I want to make myself ready. I may be qualified to go in the rapture. The rapture must take place. The Lord Jesus Christ has said it. The prophets have said it. It has been decoded of old. It has been announced of old. It has been uh, uh, typified of old. Elijah's case is a clear case. The restoration and eventually led to the transformation, translation. I pray that you pray. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord now. Open your mouth everywhere and talk to the Lord now. Open your mouth everywhere you find yourself and talk to the Lord now. I want to tell you that uh, the rule of the game is still the same. We heard the word of the Lord in the beginning. And we opened our mouths and prayed. We weren't shouted upon. But today you need to shout so that somebody can talk. But immediately after the fellowship, you see people talking and talking and talking. And not relenting. Now... The rule of the game is still the same. If you hear the word, you pray it in, you try to understand it, you don't need to make haste to go. This is the rule of the game. Otherwise, if the Lord allows anybody to live any contrary life and the person comes into the kingdom, then God is unjust. But God is not unjust. What he demands of them of all, that is what he demands of them today. That is the truth. No more, no less. No more, no less. If the Lord Jesus Christ comes today, he will still be saying, men ought always to pray and not to be discouraged. He will still preach it. And then he said, when he finished that uh, um, parable, he said, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes in the course of time, will he find faith in the earth? Will he find people who, are, who have listened to the word, who are doing the thing that uh, should be done? That's the meaning. Will he find people who are listening to the word and saying, come Lord Jesus? Will he find people who are saying, turn me around, O God in heaven? Will he find people who are shouting and saying, Lord? We live find people who have discovered themselves and they're saying how oh, a proud man I have been. Oh my God, I'm sorry for my arrogance. I'm sorry for the kind of mind I carry, even the, the, the metaphysical mind that I carry, the judgmental attitude that I carry. Precious Father, have mercy upon me. We live find people that are saying have mercy upon me. Will he find people that, that illustrated with the two people that came into the temple? One came and then saying, I'm not like this other sinner. But this other person struck his breast and said, have mercy upon me, O God. And went home justified. Will the Lord find men and women, boys and girls who are praying and saying, Lord, have mercy upon me. 
have mercy upon us? Will he find the people who have skeletons in their cupboards? Will he find people who are hypocrites? Now, and they are saying, enough of hypocrisy. When I come around, I will behave like I'm a child of God, but now, but now, but now in the university, but now in the private place, but now in the place of war, but now in the village, but now in the secondary school, look at what I am doing. Will they find people that are saying, enough of hypocrisy, O oh Lord? Will they find people who are saying, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, have mercy. O oh Lord, have mercy. O oh Lord, have mercy. Look at me. I remain the same. I claim to have become a Christian, but every day I am the old person that I've ever born. Look at my mindset. There is no sanctification. There is no change between, and there is no difference between the character I had Five years ago, when I gave my life to Jesus, 10 years ago, and the character that I'm manifesting today, precious Father, have mercy upon me. Will you find people that are saying that? Will you find people that are wanting to move from one level to another? Will you find people that are saying, I'm born in the house of God and there is nothing I can show for it? I'm still ashamed of the Bible. I'm still ashamed of identifying with Jesus in the public and say that I'm a Christian. I'm still ashamed of Jesus. I can't identify even with him in the school, in the university, in the school of nursing, in the place of work, in the village. Will you find people that are saying, Lord, I want to partake of this uh, mystery. I want to partake of this communion, communion in the blood, in the body and blood of Jesus Christ, remembering his death on the cross of Calvary and remembering what he has done to us. You do this in memory of me. Will you find people who, who step back in church after the message? And then other people are going and they step back by the window and they are praying. One hour they have not finished. 30 minutes they have not finished because they are taking, they are dressing their lives. Will you find people that are saying, my relationship from now on must change. Lord, I thank you because we have spoken a few things on the matter, the topic in preparation for Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper. I thank you. What else will I say? The rule of the game is still the rule of the game. Lord, I look to the congregations of the watchmen wherever they are found. Here in Nigeria, in Africa, and other places of this world. And I'm asking you, great Father in heaven, let it not be that there is somebody or people that are associated with this ministry, one way or another, born in the ministry by pastors, by workers, then a rock of ages. And then at the end of the day, they will miss the trumpet sound and they will not be able to get up. And then it will be eternity forever. And then all the opportunities that have been lost will not be staring the persons in the face and regret will be for all eternity father i must not be such people this is my desire this is me, my prayer this is my anguish day after day i'm saying why should such people be born why should they be born lord in heaven i pray you spirit of god bring conviction into the hearts of people. For the Lord has spoken and said, when the Spirit comes, he shall convict men of sin and of righteousness, the need for righteousness and of judgment to come. Lord, and the Spirit has come. I pray, Lord, in glory, that across board, among the youth, born by pastors and workers, 
eternal rock of ages, wherever they are, let the Spirit convict them of sin, of righteousness, the need for righteousness, and of judgment to come, of eternity, that then men turn around and follow what should be followed. Lord, you know that the present day is full of contradictions. The present day is full of uh, voices. My Father, my God, soft cells. Everybody is a champion. Many people have followership and they have nothing. Even celebrities have followership. Somebody was wearing scanty dress said, I have no shame. And then he began to mention some shameless woman that is following who is a domicile overseas. And he said, I have no shame. That's my life. My father, my God, Judas said, that was me. That was my life. Jesus, all the things that you are saying, this is Judas' chariot. I love money. At the end of the day, the money became nothing. Precious father, I pray, let nobody be Judas. From among the people that listen unto this man, thank you very much. Because I should ask myself, why was I born? Why did you make me a pastor? Did I ask you that I wanted to be a pastor? Lord in glory, I hate to see people go from the house of God to hellfire. I don't want to see that. I don't want to be associated with such a thing. I don't want to see that. Bless the Redeemer. I pray, dear Lord, of our salvation, that in this ministry, as a people... Listen to the things that are coming for deluge of God's word. Eternal Father in glory from there to the point to point. Lord, I pray that the spirit of God, the spirit of conviction will overcome, overtake every person, the watchman. That there may be totality of restoration. And then the restoration will yield jubilation and jubilation will yield praise. Have I not testified of the thing that you have done in my body? And uh, it's fantastic what you can do. Everything has fizzled away. Everything has melted. Everything has shrunk. Lord, I pray that the multitude of people will join me, that they may benefit of the powers that be, even the power of the living God and the Spirit of God. Thank you very much for answer to prayers. I say, Lord, Lord, I say, I commend all of them. Wherever they are found, all the people that are hearing my voice even at this point, I commend them unto the Lord. And I say, Lord, take over. Do not give any chance to anybody. Precious Father, those that should be quickened and pursued, pursue them. In the name of Jesus Christ, those that are should be pursued, that are Given sliding tackle. Tackle them down. In the name of Jesus. Don't spare anybody. Tackle them down. Thank you my father. Because uh, you have the power. The resources are with God. We are in the last days. Tackle people down. Tackle the pastor down. Tackle the person that is erring down. And let them come to the cross. My father my God. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Tackle the youth down. Tackle them down to the cross. Tackle the adults down. Tackle the educated people down. Let everybody see his or her wretchedness. That God might have mercy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. In that day, David said, I have sinned. I have sinned. I have committed iniquity. Precious Father, let the people call spare, spare. And let them see their errors. Let everybody that's committed iniquity see the iniquity in the right perspective in the name of Jesus. That is what they ought to be in church. I'm not interested in any other thing than that. I am not interested. I didn't begin to rule people. I came to give my life to Christ and to live right and to go to heaven. I don't want any other thing and that the people should uh, look in war, my father, so that everybody can discover all our faults, precious father. 
Those of us that cannot recover our force, what you did to Elijah, do to all of us. What you did to Isaiah, do to all of us. In the name of Jesus Christ, bring everybody down. Tackle everybody down. In that day, he was saying, whoa, 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 like a dog. Whoa, 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 whoa. And then, you saw that he had a need in his life. And then you showed him the law. Thank you, my father. Lord, I know what happened. In the day that I was praying to you, Lord, heal me. Lord, heal me. Because of the troubles I had before I came to Jesus. Lord, heal me. And then I remember the dockyard experience. When I went to ease myself and I said, let me pray a little. Great father in heaven and I said, the earth is the lost and the fullness thereof. And with that scripture, you opened my eyes of understanding and I began to scream. Look at this mighty God. Look at how great he is. I've not done anything for him since I, I, I believed. And then I'm asking him to heal him. I began to confess sin. My father, my God. Let every dick and Harry get into the dockyard experience. In the name of Jesus Christ. So that the women will know, the men will know. Blessed father, that there may be righteousness everywhere. I praise you, Lord, because of what you have done. Thank you for answer to prayers. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. And I hear the people chorusing and saying, Amen. Amen. They say, Amen, because they agree with the things that the man of God has said. Remember I said, when God speaks to us, go take advantage of the things that God has said. That's the rule of the game. God bless you for hearing the word.